Hello, this is Tim with Tada Farm, and I'm going to do a series here on painting this uh, battery box. Um, show you the process I do for getting something ready to paint. I've used it on some other farm equipment, but uh, what I use is this cut, it's called Rust Cutter. Now this I bought on Amazon, got it in a gallon jug because I use it so much. Uh, but you can get this at Tractor Supply in the one quart bottle, spray bottles. And I think it works great. It stops the rust. Um, read the instructions on the back. Uh, they're real good to follow, but uh, we'll show you how this works and what I got to do to get this battery box ready. Um, we'll take a wire brush and we'll scrub off this loose paint and uh, get it cleaned up. And uh, we'll scrub it harder than that, but you'll see as we go through in this process of what all it takes to get something ready to paint. All right, we got it pretty cleaned up. At least, well, here's the spot. Yeah, you just want to get like spots like that cleaned off. But some of that being there is not a bad thing. Let me air blow this off again. So that's that's what we're looking for there. There's my brush. Here's my spray bottle. So we're just going to use that brush and this spray bottle right here and this so i'll get this shook up in the bottle and we'll spray it and you'll see what happens just take that brush and just scrub it kind of in Gets a little foamy, but that's all right. It'll dry off. But that's all we do, just coat, coat the whole thing with that. And then it, any excess will wash off. I did this one time on a hopper wagon and uh, the stuff didn't do like it was supposed to. I ended up calling the manufacturer and they said, well, you cleaned it too good. So I try not to do that anymore, but that's the goal. We'll just sit here and just keep working it around, spraying this stuff on it and brushing it in. So we'll be back and I'm done. You can kind of see how that foaming kind of goes away it's been maybe 15 minutes or so we'll let that dry for 24 hours and then spots where this paint is it's not going to dry it's going to stay kind of a tacky wet feeling but once this all dries it turns to a white and i'll show you that right now we're just gonna let that set and we'll be back with it tomorrow all right here 24 hours later you can kind of see some of that white chalky stuff there that's what that rust cutter is supposed to do if you don't get it too cleaned. Um, it's for the most part dry. Some of that paint spots are still kind of, it's still tacky there, but we're going to wash that off anyway. Like right here, it's wet. You can see. But that's okay. We're going to wash that off. It's dry here, and we're just going to rinse it off. That's what we're doing. We don't want to scrub it real hard. We don't want to take anything abrasive and break that seal that that stuff has put on there. So we're going to go in the next room here and wipe it off. All right, this process is pretty straightforward. We're just going to take this sponge and wipe off any of the excess that's on here. See some of that crud. We're just cleaning it is all we're doing. Nothing major, not scrubbing hard, just getting the loose tacky stuff that's off there. Yeah, and you want to use rubber gloves with this because um, it, it is a chemical and uh, I've never been burnt with it but it does kind of stink a little bit. Get the bottom here real good.
All right, we'll rinse this off. I got another one here. I'll show you. It it did the uh, white chalkiness a little more, so we'll be right back in a second. All right, you can see where this chalked up a little more, but that's that's kind of what you're looking for is that chalkiness. And this I did a week or so ago, and we're just gonna rinse it off real quick right now. And this is the floor. But, uh, yeah, this was pretty rusted right here. So. Get that all cleaned off. This has got a lot of oily, greasy grime on this side. This would be the bottom side. Well, we're going to let those dry out. We can kind of help it here a little bit. But uh, you know how water and paint don't mix together very good. So we're going to let those 24 hour dry so all the moisture is out of all the... Oh, the humidifier kicked on. But it's hard for you to dry that moisture out of that. And we want to make sure that that gets dried real good. Don't want to try to paint that with water on it. So we'll let these dry for 24 hours and then we can spray them. Well, it's been more like a week here between, but... This is what it looks like the next day. That dries a chalky white like that. That's a reaction with the rust. You can see the top there. And then that one there, that's after you wash it off. They've had plenty of time to dry, so we're going to prime them here real quick. And then uh, we'll get on to the next step. All right, we got them primed. Um, the instructions say you don't have to, you can paint right over that, but that coating works as a primer, but uh, we're going to give it a little extra protection, um, especially since that's going to have a battery in it, just to give it a little extra, but uh, we'll give them 24 hours to dry, and then we'll see if we can't get back and paint them tomorrow, so stay tuned. Well, I'm done with this video series on the painting um i did not get video of it i'm used to my gopro and the record button on my phone is in a different spot and i took a lot of pictures of nothing so i don't have the video of painting but basically what i did here is um this is two coats the first coat i warmed it up with the salamander heater first then sprayed it um let that dry came back about two days later because the temperatures got cold here in ohio and the, the second day it warmed up. It was about 55 degrees here in the barn. So I put a second coat on and touched up a few spots that I missed. You know, a lot of times when you're spraying, you miss little spots like this right in here. So I, I hit these spots. Well, then you get kind of a shiny spot and get some overspray. So then I, I gave the whole thing another coat again. And like I said, it was cooler. So with it being cooler, it did not let the vapors come out. And that's, that has a lot to do with the paint we have today. Uh, 10 years ago, I used to use a paint called Valspar, got it at Supply, Ace Hardware, a lot of places carried it. Um, it had what it had called CFCs in it, and the EPA got involved and said, oh, we can't have CFCs, oh my gosh, the ozone's going to come apart. So the EPA got involved and got rid of that kind of paint. So the first paint that came out without those CFCs was Magic, and I did not like that paint at all, so... Right now, I know this is John Deere green, but I use Rust-Oleum farm implement paint. Um, and it contains, if you read the label on here, it contains no CFCs to deplete the ozone. Oh, so we're all safe now and we can live and survive. But anyway, it, it doesn't dry as good as the old Valspar paint. And you got to be more careful with temperatures. So it's still a little soft. I guess that's what I'm getting at. It's it's dry. I can pick it up, move it around, do anything. But with it being a little soft, I don't want to put the battery on here yet and install it. So we're going to let it set out and dry for probably a week or so. Let that get good and hard. Um, right in our side, our tack room here. That's uh, temperature controlled for the leather and stuff. So I can keep it in there. The temperature in there is 60 degrees. So we'll have it in there. Keep it where it will dry. Um, get a hard film on it. But... I've used this product on quite a few pieces of equipment. Um, this rust cutter has been very successful for me. Um, I've had no problems with it. Um, can't say it'll work for you as well as it has for me, 
key is following the instructions and cleaning the, cleaning the surface before you do any uh, process of putting this chemical on or any other product. But like this disc right here, uh, this is international. Completely disassembled this four years ago. Needed new blades, a couple bearings were bad. So in the process, cleaned it, scrubbed it, put this rust cutter on her, followed all the directions, and painted it. And other than it being faded, it's sitting outside all the time, it's performed real well. Right next to it here is a uh, underfirth caulty planter. I got this several years ago. That's probably been six, seven years ago I got this. The tines were all bad, the spikes. So I pulled them all off, pressure washed it clean. Um, Use this rust cutter product on it. Got that sealed up again, neutralizing that rust. That's key, neutralizing the rust. Primed it, painted it. It was green, it had a little bit of green paint on it, so I painted it green again. And this thing's worked out great. I've had a lot of success with it. It's faded a little bit, but it sets outside. And then this JM Hopper Wagon, it's been probably nine, ten years ago I bought this. And um, flaky rust all over, outside, inside. The outside was worse than the inside because the inside, the, the farmer had it before me, he had beans and corn and it brushed that stuff off. But it's real flaky. And I just, I, I took a wire brush, sandpaper, cleaned it. I actually cleaned this too good according to the manufacturer, the, the company that makes rust cutter. Uh, it actually did not oxidize. It actually got this black hard coat on it. And they said that's that's because there was no rust to react with it. So it, it, it did that oxidation uh, or didn't do the oxidation process of it, but it did the sealing part of it. And it works as a primer. Uh, it's just a clear type primer. So, but the key is with it, you can't, you can't break that seal. That, that It seals the metal and that's what protects you from rust. As long as that metal is uh, covered and sealed, it's not going to rust on you. There's no oxygen that can get to it to oxidize. So I've had a lot of success with it. Um, I hope you can too. If you can't find rust cutter, um, you can get other products that do the same thing. The key is you got to oxidize um, that metal. You got to cover it. You got to you got to have that chemical reaction to, to stop that oxidation, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So hopefully you've enjoyed this series. Hope you've learned something from it. Um, I'm going to look at trying to do a couple more series like this. We'll see how it goes. But, hey, thanks for watching. Hope you're having a good day where you are.